What's up guys, Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today I actually have a rare treat for the channel. When I woke up this morning, I had no idea this was gonna happen, but I created a video about four years ago, it was 2015, where I went and toured this giant Bitcoin mine that's here right in my home state of Washington. It was massive, it was a great video, it turned out amazing. I got to shoot it because of my buddy Marshall Long, who's in the Bitcoin game, he goes by OGBTC on Twitter. He also runs Mocket League, which is a Rocket League uh, like streaming platform and like esports thing. Anyways, you guys can check it out, I'll link it down in the video description, but he contacted me today. You know what he said? that the legal restrictions on the video have been lifted so I can re-upload it and you guys can finally see it. Now let me give you a little bit of backstory before it starts out. One, I'm gonna look a little bit different because again, that was four years ago. A lot changes in four years. Now the reason that the video originally was taken down was because one of the investors got cold feet after I published the video and requested that it got taken down. I don't really know the reasoning behind it. I just know it had something to do with them being worried about the space being compromised or perhaps even some of the electrical stuff that they were doing. They just didn't want it Known. However, none of that matters anymore because everything at the site has been completely updated, all different equipment, all different power, but it's still online today and operating. But I want to share with you right now a video that I put together and edited four years ago and never properly got to share with you. Now, if you guys remember this video, you were literally 1% of my audience that got to see it before I had to take it down. Enjoy. It's time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. I'm here with Marshall Long from at Final Hash. Now, we're out here in, I would say, what's going to be the largest Bitcoin mine in North America. It's somewhere in Washington. I can't disclose the location because it's super duper secret. But uh, you can tell from, from looking around, it, it sure as hell doesn't look like what you'd think a Bitcoin mine would look like. All right, guys, when we're talking about Bitcoin mining, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go and watch my original video I did on Bitcoin mining. Uh, Marshall liked that video. A lot. There's a link down in the video description. I go through and explain painstakingly every detail about how Bitcoins work and how the mining operation works and everything. This is just a very big version of what I'm doing at my house. Like right now, I think I'm running like an Antminer S3 Plus oh, yeah. and a Spawn Dually SP20, totally about two terahash a second. So take what Jerry's doing times it about a thousand. That's what you got. That that that's what they're doing here. So the whole idea with a big Bitcoin mine, like this is, is to efficiently pack as many of these miners as they can into a small space, get it to coo get the cooling right, perfect, so that you can run this stuff 24/7, and then get the power as cheap as humanly possible, so that you can maximize your profit. That's right. That's right. And 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 it's realistically an actual mining operation. Like you can pretty much attribute everything that's going on here to, to like mining. a real gold mining operation. It's like you have heavy equipment, you have cost, you have fuel costs, yep. and you have recovery. Everything. That you then go and sell and turn into real money. That's right. All right, guys. Well, let's go check out some of the mining equipment that you're going to be seeing today. And then we're going to move on to some of the huge containers that are built out. It's giant data centers that have one purpose in life, and that is just to mine bitcoins. All right, guys, so we're here looking at some of the equipment that's pretty much the cornerstone of this mining operation. Right here, it's not what they use exclusively, but I'd say this is primarily what you're using yeah, like right 85%. now. So, so 85%, but it's the Ant Miner series. You have the S3 Plus, which you guys have seen. I actually run this guy up in the Nerd Cave. Um, and then we have the bigger boy. This is the Ant Miner S4, which this thing is capable of, uh, what's the hash rate on this guy? About 2,000 giga hash. So 2,000 giga hash on this guy, or otherwise that's about 2 tera hash, right? Yep. 2 tera hash, and it consumes about 1,400 watts of power, and that's important. And we're going to get to that. And then over here, you have the mighty efficient Ant Miner S5. Right. And this guy does what? You said about 1.1? 1 1.15 terahash, that's right. 1.15 terahash, and it only uses 600 watts of power. Now, here's where this all gets important. The most commonly asked question that I get on my Instagram posts and my Twitter posts are, I thought Bitcoin mining isn't profitable anymore. Right. Everybody says it. Like, I'm, I'm obviously doing it. Is it profitable for me? The answer is yes. Is it profitable for you? That depends. There's a lot of factors. Like, first and foremost, probably the biggest factor here is power cost. That's right. Right here in Washington State where I live, I pay about 10 cents a kilowatt per power where I live. Now, when you get power in bulk, you get a substantial discount depending on how you work the deal and everything, but he is not paying 10 cents a kilowatt. Most definitely not. So he's getting a lot better deal than that. But 10 cents a kilowatt is already a steal of yeah. a deal compared to like the East Coast in the United States, which could be 30, 35 cents a kilowatt. Yeah. Right. Now realize, 
that when we're talking about hash rate, that's how fast this machine can generate hashes, which ultimately means how much money the machine is capable right. of making, more or less. There's different types of mining, but in a general pool mining scenario, right. the faster and more hash rate you have, the better off you're going to be earning, earning coin. The quicker you'll earn the coin. Correct. So this guy right here, well, I'm just now getting into this. Is the, this is the S5, 600 watts, 1.15 tera hash. Right. It's actually the most efficient miner on the market that's commercially available right now. Exactly. So if inefficiency is huge with this, because this is the way you figure out if Bitcoin is profitable. You take the cost of the equipment, you take the cost of your power, and you figure out basically how much the machine is making over a fixed period of time. Over how much it costs you to run it. Yeah, and you also have to keep in mind that Bitcoin fluctuates in value right. up and down. And just like with anything, that's going to be a risk. But it's no different than gold mining. The analogy that I would use is if you go in your backyard with a pan, and you pay him a little bit of dirt, right. you might make 10 cents. You're not, that's not really profitable. It's gonna take you a while to pay for your pan, right? But if you go and get a giant piece of equipment, open up a mine and set up a sluice box, and oh, you're, you're gonna get a lot more gold a lot faster, but there is higher risk involved and things like that. But ultimately there are a lot of different options for mining, but for this operation we're looking at today, they have dense back this equipment in shipping containers. <laughs> and we're gonna right. show you that here in just a few minutes. But by dense packing it and optimizing the efficiency of the cooling on this equipment so they can run it 24-7 and maximize that turnover, they're able to make a profit, and it's a tidy profit. All right, guys, so now we're standing inside of one of the shipping containers that are going to build out to be one of the big mining rigs, and they have several of these, and we're going to show you in different states of development. But right now, you can see behind us, it's basically a giant shipping container that has holes cut in the roof for ventilation. And this is important because these things pump out a lot of heat. A lot. Just to give you an idea, how much power do you guys have piped into one of these? Per container, it's about 300 kilowatts. So 300 kilowatts. 30 to 35 houses worth. Oh, it's a lot of power. Like my house where I live, I have 100 kilowatt service. And that's a lot. And that's a lot. And this has three times that coming into one shipping container. About 40 foot. roughly what, 40 <laughs> foot long? It's pretty insane. All right, so if you look on the back of the container, they weld a carriage in place here that's designed to store the transformers that's right. to provide that, what it was, the 300 About kilowatts 300 KW, yeah. of power. So they have to put a lot of power equipment on these. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these containers that's a little bit further down the road in development. All right, so now we're in a container that's even a little bit further along. You can see here on the walls, we have all the junction boxes that run the length, and this is to distribute all of the power to, to everything. Plus, you guys even have cable racks running down the full length. And it's amazing how much stuff goes into this, the wiring oh, yeah. and everything. So here, let's take a look at the, the breaker box back here so you guys can get a little bit of a feeling for just how much power goes into each one of these shipping containers. Back here, you can see, look, that's all. Hey, good point. Don't dude. touch that. Here, do it, do it. Vanna white it, dude. Vanna white it. Oh. Uh, yeah, basically, don't touch that panel or you'll, you'll be vaporized. Instantly. Yeah, it's all, it's all 220 breakers. Yeah. And like you said, 300 kilowatts coming in here. But this is, now it's all wired up. At this point, let's go ahead and show you what one of the containers looks like when it's like full tilt, giving it the business. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, Marshall, well, I think it's time to give them the money shot. What do you think? Give it to them. All right, so after they're done building out these containers, this is the end result. Look at how many of these machines are in here. You got S4s, S5s, everything. Actually, this looks like it's mostly S4s, huh? Mostly on. S4s in here. This is literally the loudest place ever. It's like being in a wing tunnel. You got air blowing through the top. Move your hair out. I mean, these things are all blowing out massive air. But this is 300 kilowatts of power running through this damn thing. And it feels like you're in a sauna.
guys, watch Marshall struggle closing in the container. I got it, don't worry. Leprechaun power! All right, so now we're standing outside where it's mildly quiet again, and the container is all sealed up, and that's when it works best, right? That's right. So it's designed to have all the air go up through and out the top, and not in through the end there. So, <laughs> so that's good to know. And it's actually not that loud out here. You definitely notice it, though. Oh, yeah. But it's kind of cool because it's all self-contained. You have your power. That's right. You have all your equipment, everything all in one container that could just be moved around literally anywhere where you have 300 kilowatts of power laying around to plug her in. And hey, you're buy, good to go. Buy three more houses. You got one. Just got to buy three more houses and, and twisty ties to put those giant wires together and you're good to go. <laughs> All right. So now you guys got to see how a huge up and coming Bitcoin operation works. And there is a lot of energy and money that goes into something like this. But we circle back to the original question. Is it really profitable to do something like this? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a loaded question, you know? So there's a lot of factors that go into what makes you profitable. Number right. one being power cost. That's yeah. why we're here in Washington that got some of the cheapest power in the state. Yeah, I pay 10 cents a kilowatt. Like we said, he's paying not even close to that. So. Much less. Yeah. And so that's the first thing. Next thing is what equipment are you running? There's some very inefficient equipment from you know the old outdated stuff. Right. That outmode stuff will cost you an arm and a leg in power. And that's another thing. And the other thing that will be the third and last thing that really makes you profitable for sure is going to be your mining strategy. So give, give us an idea of like what, what a mining strategy is. Like what does that entail? So sometimes mining Bitcoin is not always the most profitable. What may be better for you is to lease your hardware through a website, maybe one like Beta Rigs. Final Hash actually just bought a website called Beta Rigs where you can actually lease your hardware to other people. Yeah, you guys may have seen, I tweeted about some of my equipment that I rented on the site and a couple of you guys actually rented my miners and used them. And the thing is, is the counter question that everybody throws, right, when you say that, is why would I want to, why would somebody rent me their miner? Like why wouldn't they just mine with it themselves? Right, and the, and the answer is because there's people in the world that have far more expensive electricity that would never even think about running equipment. Right. So in Brazil, for example, we've got a lot of customers from Beta Rigs that are in Brazil because their power is like 40 cents a kilowatt hour. Right. So, and maybe they, there's also another group of people that don't want to buy hardware. They may want to put down $5. Hey, I want to check out mining for the first time. Yeah. I don't want to buy something. I want to put down $5. And then you can just rent somebody's hardware for maybe three hours. And you would expect to pay a small premium for that. But for the person who's leasing the hardware, yeah. it's going to be more profitable than just mining it. Yeah, because it's a win-win because they're actually making a little bit of a premium because you're willing to pay more than what they would be normally spending in their like demographic with their power and everything. So they're making a profit, but it's still far cheaper for them to lease your equipment at a premium than running their own equipment with that god-awful expensive power. That's right. I mean, that whole container that we just saw, it's actually all running on beta rigs. So you could actually rent that whole container for even just as little as three hours. I didn't know that, that's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah. And the cool thing about the beta rig site is when you have your hardware up there to rent, you're still mining. Your that's hardware right. is still mining 24 seven. It's only when somebody pays to lease your hardware does it switch over and mine for them and then it seamlessly switches back after the lease expires. That's right. And I thought that that was really cool because when you first told me about beta rigs, I was like, I, I don't get it. Like I gotta just let my equipment just sit. <laughs> And you don't, the equipment is always mining. Right. It's just whether you're making that premium because somebody wanted to rent your equipment or whether you're just making what you normally make for mining. Right, so if it's not rented out, it's just gonna mine on your backup pool. And then when yep. somebody rents it, the beta rig server will kick your miner and say, hey, switch over here. Yep, so realistically, Bitcoin mining, if you wanna get into it, check and see how much your power is. Check and see how much you can get equipment for if you want to mine out of your own house and make sure that you have the power and cooling to support it. Obviously, if you live in a tropical environment, you have to run an air conditioner in full tilt while paying 35 cents a kilowatt, you're probably never going to make anything with, no matter how efficient the equipment is right now. But if you want, you can rent equipment through beta rigs or other sites that do stuff like that. There's lots of different options. There's cloud mining too, which we even talked about a little bit in the past. But there are lots of options out there for people that are interested to get into Bitcoin mining. And just like anything, Bitcoin mining is a volatile currency, just right. like anything else. It can go up, it can go down. It can be $175 one day and it can be $285 the next day. Now granted, it's BTC is the most stable That's right. of the cryptocurrencies. The other ones are like, Woo! Bitcoin at least kind of stays in the realm of realistic. So that's why I continue to mine Bitcoin, even though it may seem to be lucrative to go after some of the other coins. Bitcoin is just the one that seems most stable to me. And it's one of those things where it's like, with my little operation I have at my house, 
Um, last time I checked, I'm making about $150 a month profit once you take power away. Right. That's awesome. I have two machines just sitting there running. One's heating my garage, another one's heating the nerd cave. That one I kind of need to move. I don't want anything heating the nerd cave. But, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, those two machines do turn a profit at the end of the month, which is awesome. They do provide a heat source in the winter time, which is just an extra added bonus. And so for me, it's absolutely profitable. But if you're on the East Coast, you're paying 35, 40 cents a kilowatt, or you're in a country like was it Brazil, yeah. where you're just paying completely out the ass for electricity, then look at some sites like Beta Rigs if you're still interested. It doesn't mean you're out, it just means it's not practical for you to mine in your house with your own equipment. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this tour of this awesome Bitcoin mining facility. I want to thank Marshall Long here from Final Hash for giving me the five cent tour. They are doing some crazy stuff here. That container I showed you that was completely filled with equipment was just one of many containers. You guys, you guys saw containers at different stages throughout this video, but you guys are building out a lot of containers. And what, what, was, what was the goal, the, the hash goal that you guys are shooting for when you're all said and done? Yeah, so at the end of the rollout will be about 5,000 terahashes, which is around 5 million gigahashes or five peta hashes. It's a lot of hashes. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>